Ladies and mental gen, welcome to what should have been uploaded a few days ago. And unfortunately we'll probably get the other one first or not because I'm recording it right now. Anyway, the thing is, right, progress on the solo queue front is actually going somewhere. I, what, played... I think I played four games. Got to promos because winning 25-ish a game because I'm a genius, but no. I figured out that the probably a better way of getting to higher rank places and playing against more decent people is to play rank fives. Well, I didn't figure that out. It just so happens to be this is what happened. It's like, I'm playing against this guy. This guy's a diamond two Irelia. And I'm playing in rank fives and because of how awesome we are. Hold your applause. Um, this is who we play against. We finished our, we won our games and we got placed straight into Platinum 2 because that's how we, then we proceeded to lose because we did absolutely derp shit retarded things, but that's nothing entirely. So, on to the show. These are the masteries I currently use because I haven't changed them, I've no idea if I'm even meant to change them, and that is the, no, oh, never mind. Wait, which one am I using? No oh, fudge. I think I'm using this one against, yeah, and I take top lane Vlad. Yeah, that's one of that. Right. I have arranged all this in nice shiny order. Everything is fine. We are going. People have asked me, why are you playing teleport as Vlad? Would you take teleport and Vlad as solo queue? In it depends, okay. If you're in if you're like lower down, say silver, bronze, then don't take teleport because it's completely fucking useless. People don't even know what the fuck to do with it. Or you might be able to. I'll sort of why I use it. I use it now because I got told to use it in a team. Because it's more useful. It's the idea of if, like, they go for Drake and their top lane is stuck here, I'll teleport down 5v4, we take the Drake, we win, like, they get a turret. Oh, well, we probably killed several of them and the Drake, it's worth it. The other thing, however, is that because you're now taking teleport, you have nothing for the lane. And you are not expected to win the lane, but there's a caveat to that, is not to lose the lane as hard as I did by not actually asking for help. I saw Vadoran's blade. Don't- Yeah! Yes! Fucking genius, Sov! I start with Doran's shield because I'm not retarded enough to start with Doran's blade because it's all well and good and in melee matchups like these you do need to maintain your speed advantage but early on a decent Irelia, which is what this one actually is, will generally abuse your face knowing that your generation is shit, you don't actually have the damage and that the more uncomfortable they make you early on then you're just not going to want to poke them as hard because the way that this matchup works is as like, such. Irelia will want to jump on you, do as much damage as she can with hit and stuff, generally anywhere between like a third to a half of your HP, and then she'll back up to regenerate. Why? Because as soon as you're in half health, you have been killing distance, which means if she jumps on you again, she can kill you. And she wants to keep this that way, because if she can do that, it means she's free to like a last hit off last hit, just hit the minions to regenerate her HP back. And in doing so, it means that, well, she's free to regenerate, you can't approach to regenerate, therefore she's out sustains you. And it's a really odd situation where she's the champion which can do this if you let her. And this is actually a really fine line between she wants to play it the her way, you have to say fuck you, I am going to abuse your face and you're not going to get away with this. Which is slightly harder because she actually has a summoner which would help her in combat. So that's the gist of it. And now that's happened, I'm going to actually run through what I did in the lane, right? And I hope this format might appeal to you a bit more as a general idea of how I would approach the lane, and then I'll show you when and why I did what I did. It's I'm trying to be more thorough and exact in this replay because it's a higher level one, and, well, I didn't get my shit kicked in, so you can say, either they're fucking terrible or I'm a genius, or... Right, moving on. Like this. I take a door and shield purely because I've seen Irelia just want to blade search to you and then jump on your face. But there was a caveat hit this is this. The min she jumped to you in the minions, you have a door and shield, which means that you're gonna block damage from her anyway and you're gonna naturally regenerate. And you are free to actually hit her. Which is what I do. I actually run a bit too far because yeah, what is that? Out of that trade, right? Let's say I lost 210, she actually lost half. So let's say I lost 40%, she lost 50%, it's just, I still managed to win the trade, and, well, that's just how it goes. Let's try it again, and you, you run to make sure I don't kick you, then she turns around, you hit her back! And that's how this lane works, generally. It's she, you can't stop her from jumping on you, 
but every time she does so, you have to make sure that you retaliate. And if you can make it that she can, you can retaliate, then you'll be fine. Because she'll be really uncomfortable to the point that even if she jumps into the game, she'll probably die as well. But if you notice, what I want to do is radically weak early on. Therefore, I will try and get the lane to push in my direction. And in doing so, I'm stuck under my turret for my weakest levels. Means I'm not going to be easily easily harassed as much, nor am I going to be dived as much. Problem, if I do get dived and killed, you have lost the lane then and there. Because, if you can imagine, right, this would be one level for one and a half and you lose it this early on. Oh, enjoy having had no, no lane. So yeah, I am still trying to Then there are other timings that you can use and exploit the cooldown for your ability. What else do I want to say? Um, find the fine line between putting pressure on her, on your, uh, no, just on her, on your laning opponent, and getting the last hit. Because as it was, right, I missed one or two CS in the wave because I decided to queue her instead of a minion. End of the day, right, if you don't kill her, or you haven't forced her out of the lane, it's not worth you missing the CS. When I missed the CS, she went home, I was like, no, oh, she actually wins from that. Which is annoying. So she went back. Again, she's trying to run at me, don't actually care. Because the minions, and she took a damage from it. She hasn't got the hit and still out again. And we will continue this when I return. What do I actually start with? Right. There are two schools of thought for this. And I've written it in my flag guide. By the way, I'm not updating the glides anymore because I really cannot be bothered. <sighs> LeBlanc, may you rest in peace. Pieces, whatever. Ah, sigil of malice. What the fuck is this? Great. Most professional I am. You can't regenerate if you're dead. Therefore, you should try to survive. It goes, survive the lane, then regenerate, then attrition. There's no point. You can't get to regeneration or attrition if you're a fucking pile on the floor from an all-in. Anyone who's ever played against Riven and let them cut your balls off will have to happily tell you this. Or even Rumble. Like, oh, I have a revolver. I have spell map. And, oh, wait, no, I'm dead. So, against IRA, um, you have two choices. A uh, safer option is to go for a giant belt because that means she'll never be able to just jump on you and kill you flat out and that gives you a lot more breathing room than you might think because they know it and they don't want to go as balls in on you. Second is that you might go for spirit visage. The only problem is it makes it that you're still vulnerable to physical damage and especially if they're like this type of team where it's basically a lot of AD and true damage it doesn't really do that much. If you were say like I don't know there was a fiddlesticks in the jungle, there was an AP mid, and I, I don't know, brown, brown, blitz, some, some of the magical, no, let's not even go there. Or Morgue or something, or there's two forces of the AP damage and maybe Spirit Vision would be a good shout. But, the problem I have with that, again, in this matchup is you want some method of getting her off your face. And that's why I generally go for Giant's Belt into Rylai's, just to control her better. But moving on, that's the overarching theme of why I made the build. Then you can watch. You have to watch her creeps, but in this matchup, you have to watch yours because something like that can happen, right? And this is where positioning is absolutely freaking crucial, right? If I was situated here, she would blade surge to it, and it was like she's jumped on your face. And then, to top it all off, she can has the blade surge up again, which you can apply more damage to if she wants to, or go back to one of your creatures situated here and disengage so you can't harass her. The situation is as such that I'm positioned here where she can't actually get to me with one, so she's very sad. But I understand that, and she's very sad, so I'm just going to hit her for it. So you have, not only have to watch their creeps, 
to know when you're last hitting, you have to watch your creeps to know when she's going to try and harass you. And this matchup is therefore more janky than most people might think. I don't know why, I'm constantly getting blue screens, so... So yeah, we're... I uh, apologize, this is a bit juttery in places. I might skip out on things I wanted to say, but I can't remember what I said when I said that. So, um... Right, what did I want to say? Like, this is going to be an example of where queuing her was the wrong move, right? She was obviously going to move back, she was on no mana, and as such I missed the cannon creep, and I also therefore missed other things as well, because I had to E in order to get, like, the minions and, like, a now behind on CS. 16 CS behind. That is generally pretty damn terrible. Okay, you don't expect to win the lane by killing her, but at least you could keep with less of a CS deficit. But it gets, it's probably hard early on to last hit as well, because you're so pretty. But, yeah. yeah. I was going to suggest how to fight Lisa, but my warning was, early on, you can probably pressure her with autos and cues, but once it gets to level 2, Two to six is where it's dangerously in her favor. And you have to be really careful. Because your Q is not on a low enough cooldown that you can adequately um, trade. As I mentioned earlier, your damage generally comes after she's done it. To pressure her back. And as such, it's neither strong enough nor is it low enough cooldown to do anything. Else. Like... In this instance, I couldn't actually care because I was stuck in the minions. I probably should have done because she was alt the line, which is why I'm running in this direction to make sure that if she does it, she can't hit us both. The other thing was she equilibrium strike, but she hit a minion. So I have the speed advantage and I'm going to turn around and fight her. I can. It's like you've just used your Q, you wasted it, and short of flashing onto me, there's nothing she can do. So she just basically screwed herself in the next minute, so, which I'm perfectly okay with. And if I can, I'm going to try and shove it to her current. Not that it actually matters in the sense that she's going to lose CS because I rarely even play so unless you're really bad for some reason. It's basically, I rarely is really good at farming with the turret. I'm going to be, I would be really amused if she lost any of these, unless it was like that low that she couldn't hit them straight down. Or just died of single cannon like that. But how easy is that to market? Incredible. I talked about the build I used. I'm basically feeling really confident. I used teleport because the Drake was taken and there was basically going to be no objective for a long time. I'm now warding that bush because every time I warded this one, it didn't do anything and this turns out to be a mistake. Especially if I'm going to let it drag to my side of the river. Now that you're a 7, you can afford to be a little bit more ballsy. Also, I would argue for not go for a giant shot, but like, you don't actually end up doing any damage to her. And that's what you do with a revolver, is that you do have AP. She finishes, and then you chase her down. You chase her down, and you do apply damage back. Although this that wasn't particularly successful, it's still even, okay? Because the point is, Blade Surge has a relatively long cooldown, but it's not as long as for the second, because you have to remember, you have to wait for it to get off your face before it actually counts it. So during that time that she hits me, I got managed to get off three cubes. And that's what you should aim for as well. Once you're past seven, is retaliate with three cubes E if possible. But the main thing is to get the fuck out of dodge. It's like right now, she's gonna dive into the bush in order to evade my counter attack. And like this is what happens when you don't ward properly. Like, if I had warded here, she would have been even lower health, and I would be in an even better situation. Yeah. I wasn't feeling comfortable with the amount of HP I was on. I was like 30, therefore I decided to go through creeps. You technically can do what I tried to do, was when she tries to equilibrium strike to pull it, which means you're not slowed, but generally if that happens, if you think about it, she's gonna jump to you, she's gonna equilibrium strike, and if you pull, 
doesn't that just mean you're basically just giving her the hit points instead? There's an argument both ways. And once you pull, that means if you go to the turret, she knows you can't troll pull again so she can just go all in on your face. As it is, I was actually afraid she would do this, but she's out of mana, right? She's out of mana, therefore I'm just going to run back because she can't do anything to me. I'm going to shove it in and this is why she runs away. She knows she can't fight me and just successfully out sustain her. Push it in and leave because I don't want to really say my welcome, but yeah, that's that. So, yeah, I then go for giants, but I did the other way around. I went for like sustainability and then for giants, and it just wasn't an issue. But actually, I'm now at nine. I feel more comfortable in being able to take the fight to her, right? I've closed the CS gap to 13 from 16. Oh my god, three CS different! It's amazing! But I'm now standing in this position that if she tries to go for a creep, I'll be there to retaliate. Like, I don't, have the, I don't have the vision, therefore I lose it. You can see why. If you choose this, ward this bush, please. I missed out quite a few cues on her because that bush was not warded. That's what else she can do. If you stand too close to a minion, the future minion hit you. But the point is, if she has no hidden style, you really don't need to run. Because the main source of her damage is from the true damage, and if she hasn't got the 20, 21, 25 in it. Oh, I got a 75? Oh, fuck me, it's an ugly score. If she hasn't got that hit, like, right, let's just seem to get three. I'm being generous. She gets three. That's what, 210 true damage that you don't want to have to deal with if she hasn't got it. Just feel free to stick around and smack her face if she tries to do it. Which she did! I didn't turn, I didn't run away, but I can't do damage to you, I'm just gonna stay here. Like, at this moment in time, I probably could take her. Nocturne turns up, and if you get die, like, die by Nocturne? If, hang on. If you get halted by a mob, which was this is the case, she jumps on me, I have the creeps, but I know she hasn't got ult, I can probably get away with this because I have a cannon creep as well, but I decided to go for it. But Nocturne comes up, so it's like, he's gonna jump in on me. So at this moment in time, it's you either want to pull before... You no, know, you just want to pull before he manages to get a tether on you. Or else you're just gonna wander away really slowly and uselessly. And... He tries recalling, can't be bothered, take a cue from him. I've now actually, you've done your job as Vlad, like the top lane can't do anything, the jungler's up here, there's freedom everywhere else, it's like you're 2v1, but it's fine, what are they going to do? Nothing, they can't fight you, I'm basically back to full HP. Chug, 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 chug. CS Quotient, down to 9. Closing the gap, and you generally close the gap. It's perfectly acceptable to do this. The only problem is now that she's gone back and bought stuff, and I haven't. So she will be going in the lane as well as the fact that she has a summon in the lane. Like there, she's she she walks in my direction, right? This is the importance of staying clear of your minions, boys. And girl. I have no idea if any of you are girls. I'm pretty sure German might be, but who cares. If you go, she goes for it. I'm not in range. Right? Like, she uses hit and star? What? What? Why? So, it's over. I can go into close quarters. I don't care. And you can see she's something for it. Like, I'm trying to position myself in such a position that she can't do anything to me. You can see how she's trying to do it aggressively, probably a bit too aggressively, but as Vlad, you can afford to do trades where they use 10 speed, you use 10, so you can do a generator all. Irelia, you have to see whether you have the balls to do that or not, because if you play it wrong, she can do that to you. But why did I kill there? Because I made a pretty stupid mistake going that close to her. And she probably could have killed me if she had wanted to. And it's probably better this.
Oh boy. So I was saying it's probably better for me to be on Purple Sider's lab because you can just go to your golems and you can just take a drink from them. It's fine. Whereas on the blue side, I was like, this thing can retaliate. These things, you can kite around a bit. But in this instance, it was I should have summoned help from the jungler, but I thought I was okay. I was not. What else didn't I do this game? I should have warded more, but I have a Rylai's. And you'll probably see why this is effective when we get into a fight, if we get into one. The problem is I really is she's on full damage, right? And then you can just lay the pressure on her. But she's too quick for me for some bizarre reason, because I don't know actually why she's that much quicker than me. She doesn't want to go under the turret because she'll die as well. And I really didn't want to stick around because I could have probably outplayed her if I wanted to, but to be honest, I should have done, right? This is what you should have done. There are minions here, and I could have flashed into the bush, but I was assuming that she wanted to go into it. I didn't actually look twice. Should have stuck underneath her, then flash EQ'd. There was a small chance that actually I did I should have done because she wouldn't have actually would she have had it? She could have queued to me and hit me, that would have killed me. He's like, can I do that before? Can I EQ before she kills me? He's like, it would have been, we would have killed each other. And it was sort of, I generally want to keep my summoners alive in a way, but it will probably have, I don't know. Could have gone for it, but I guess I'm too cautious. And some people who have watched me recently see me do the most jankily stupid things because, well, I actually treat my rank now as experimenting. It was like, uh, I was up against a Murkai earlier today. I went for pure CDR instead of any regeneration. I think, can I just get away with the base on Q and not my defensive items? The answer is, eh, uh, probably not. My face. My precious freaking face. Trying to skip boring parts. Jumps me again. Like, would you get off my face Aurelia, please? Doesn't wanna. And it's like, I can't do anything anymore. Aurelia has solo pushed the top two turrets. Because I just didn't ask for jungle for help. I'm too used to solo queue, whereas like, I don't ask jungle for help. I want to be left the fuck alone because normally they'll come to my lane and they'll ruin it. Even in fives! Uh, it mostly has come top sometimes and basically made my lane even fucking harder where we generally now have a rule where I just won't ask for any help because I'm generally self-sufficient and I'll do everything myself because I'm a man! <sighs> this is the alternative, however. Irelia has gone for a pure damage build. It's like, if you want... Can't escape the blood. That positioning wasn't actually great. I positioned a way that, if you look at it, right, I guess I wasn't thinking about it correctly. But no, I was. Right? We fight. She keeps coming on my face. Can't do anything about it. Keeps carving into me. I should have altered first. But if you look at it, right, I position so that she can't actually just walk up to me and hit me anymore. So I can keep kiting her. And if she goes this way, I'm going to tag alongside her, but that means she's going to flash this way instead. Like, I can't do anything about that. That's just what, how it is. So she's blown both summoners, dies, and blood. It's all good. I know not going to mid. I know things have gone down in mid. I can keep shoving top. All is good. Rylai's on Vlad. I know why. Vlad hasn't got CC. I needed to kite. And it's just... It works because it synergizes with passive. It... It doesn't do enough damage. That's why people didn't like it on Cat before her rework. It didn't do the damage that he needs to do as his job. 
And this is something that um, I wanted to talk to my team about, right? I have teleport, this is why I am splitting, because I can afford to. If a fight breaks out, I'll go to them. Now, sure, they all, right? But any of them could have placed a ward and I could teleport. As it is, I am running on the other side of the map and there's nowhere I can teleport to. If they'd ran north, I could have teleported. Right now, I was like, I can't teleport. Apparently, you can teleport to this because it comes with a Java flag, but I did not know that. And as a result, we lost one, we lost two, we lost three, and yeah, we lost four. It's like, well, fuck. Should I have been there? Yes. Why was I not there? I had no reason to teleport. There was a question of could I just jump in and kill everything? Probably probably not. That was my call. Like, I actually I was a 50-50 where I could kill two. I might be able to kill three. I in hindsight I probably should have went for it. If I was, was I 16? I swear there was a reason why I said I didn't want to. But anyway, if you want to make a play like the one suggested, which is you just jump in and do it, you have to do it then and there. There's no time for a decision. And what was the other thing? I was scared of being CC to the floor. It was like, oh, bubble, stun. St like, bubble, stun, charm, terror. It's like, eh, uh, uh. Too cool. Should have gone for it anyway, but didn't because... Police brutality on Aurelia because full offensive gear is logical. And then we can catch an object, so we catch it. Oriana managed to only hold one person, but now I'm stuck fighting three people. But I'm okay with this because this is what Vlad does in team fight. Result! Winner! We want to take the turret, the inhibitor, and leave. If you ever do this in a solo queue, right? What you do is you take the turret, you take the inhibitor, and then you back. So many people will decide, we'll get the turret, get the inhibitor, and then two, like, some things can happen. They either decide, we can end the game. They can't, they die. They go to the bot lane, trying to get this inhibitor. They can't, they die. Or they get it, they die anyway, and then they rush the barrel, and then your face is dead. It's just, they, 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 I don't know how to explain this. One option allows you to get something for nothing. The other option means you're more greedier and they get something as well. It's just uh, your call. I prefer having something and my opponent having nothing, but maybe I'm greedy. I, I don't know. You might call me a pansy. I call the fact that, that no, let's not even go there. Oh yeah, Jinx HP. This is an example of. I get the ult off, there are four people sitting on me, these guys are not doing anything! Right? And, like, Nocturne's not dead, this was not my fault, okay. The problem with this was that Jinx got caught and poked. So, where the fuck was I? So, we were setting up a Baron, blah 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 blah. Jinx gets caught out by Ari, should have died, didn't die, and as such as the game when you started to fight with many people. They initiate a fight. I'm in a very, very stupid spot. So I, I'm like in the middle of the uh, four enemy team. I'm just like, I want to flash over the wall and run away, she's waiting for me, she just goes to the army and is like, yeah, fuck. Yep. <sighs> this is a retake, by the way. Why? Because it blue screened again. I don't know why. Like, as soon as I load up while we play, it'll blue screen. So I'm going to try Baron Replays next. We haven't sent them to me. We'll see what happens. Right now, the objective for the, uh, the rest of the team is to stop looping the back, which they do. They're now too loaded to the Baron. Result 3 for 2. I mean, it's in their favor, yes, but it would have been more disastrous if it hadn't done anything, we just let them do the Baron. So right now, we'll rely, we're just gonna keep going. Did I mention about builds? Basically, it was... CDR boots will give you enough CDR, and Rylize will give you enough tankiness, so you can just go, you have to trade it off by going straight for the power again. Which is why I want to get my Rabadons up, because it helps with passive as well. 
next. We then clean the place, and then we're just going to straight out just do the battle. Result. The result is we get the Baron buff, but the question is where I am. It's like, I could have stayed in the pit to deal with these guys first, but normally you want someone to deal with their back line so you, the rest of your team has leisure to deal with whatever the fuck they want. Run it's four versus two, and if I can deal with these guys, then I die, but we'll have four people versus the rest of them. It's not that big of a problem. The problem is when I get charmed and instantly geeked. End result, three for four. We get the Baron, but it was a bit uh, messy. So, they take the inhibitor, run away. Officer Vi steals everything. Well, value. And I'm wondering whether you guys actually found this particular replay be more interesting. Hopefully there'll be better ones in the future, but I might relegate it to support because my fresh apparently is quite good. Anyway. We shall see. If I see anything interesting, I shall give it to you. But otherwise, right now, it's just poke over the place. And the replay's almost over anyway. You probably guess what happens. Like, you just shove all their shit in, you fight, and you win. Like, I'm just trying to see if I can get to the fight, just so I can wrap this up. So the fight begins. I only managed to hold one person because I'm fucking bad at the game. But we deal with it. There's a fight, basically, die the back line. By the way, someone dies, but nothing of value is really lost. Like, the inhibitors are more important, so it's like, oh yeah, you're dying. Yeah, uh, who cares? We're in the game. So yeah, this fight. What do we, what do we say about it? We start, Ira goes in, right? I thought I could ult. I thought I could ult this and that would hit Ari as well, but she ults out of the way before I can do that, so I miss her. But it's okay, because brutality combo or police brutality and then rock to the face. Nukes solve everything, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen it here. Then, like, just walk past the tower and do the good man go down and deal with everything else. It's like, no problem. I mean, okay, well, he dies. I said. Moving swiftly on. Game is over. Finally. So, yeah, that will wrap up this game. This was the 15 of power. Um, like posi positioning things to see where we would be placed. Placement series, there we go. 5 out of 5. We got placement of Platinum 2, I think I mentioned that earlier. This was a game, like a full team of diamonds. Diamond 2, Diamond 3s, etc. I might have a Diamond 1 in there somewhere, but it's all good. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Sobiet. Good luck. Have fun.